All right, so as I mentioned, I just wanted to quickly kind of talk through the process of putting together your periodic table poster. So the first thing that you need to do is pick a topic, and a lot of you have already expressed um, general topics at least, some of you more specific already. But what you want to do is start out with a general topic that you, you know, that you know something about or that you're, you know, passionate about. Okay, so I'm going to start out with Star Wars. That's a big category, just like saying music or sports or, you know, books or movies. Okay, those are broad topics and they're a perfect place to start. Then you want to dive down a little bit more and say, well, what are my actual elements going to be? If I pick movies, am I going to pick actual movies or am I going to pick actors or directors? Um, anything like that. Or if I do sports, am I going to do teams or athletes or only athletes who play certain positions? Things like that. So I'm just going to go with um, characters. Okay. And you might, you know, throughout this process, you might have to stop and go back to the drawing board. You might have to modify your idea. You might have to, you know, go back through any of these steps, multiple iterations, multiple, um, you know, tries to get it right because you might get a part way through this and realize oh i can't i can't do the next step with what i have so you have to change it or revise it or maybe pick something you know different from characters you know i might start out saying i'm going to do star wars and i'm going to do um vehicles from star wars and then i get part way through it and say i can't i can't come up with enough categories or i can't come up with enough vehicles um so then i go back and say all right well what about characters okay so i'm going to pick that and then you might at this point say, I'm going to do Star Wars characters and I know I want to do certain groups, right? I, I can already picture in my mind certain categories and then you start filling in those categories. Okay. But you're going to start, you have to pick out your elements. Okay. So I've got a bunch of characters here um, and I'm just going to start spreading them around. Okay. And as you do this, as you're coming up with your characters, you might also start to see or think of groups to put them in. So again, you might come up with the groups first and then fill them in. You might come up with the elements and then try to put them in groups. You know, so, so this is not, there's not a straight line um, at this point. There's lots of different ways to do this, but I just want to give you some idea of the process overall. And then the last couple steps are kind of important that you do them. Uh, a certain way to get the best result. But these first few things, they're, they're pretty organic. Um, there's a lot of ways to do this, but I'm just showing you, you know, kind of a thought process for how to get this done. So like I said, I might, at this point, I've got, you know, what, less than 10 characters maybe, and I might start to say, okay, well, these guys can go together. Some of these go together. Um, you know, now I've got, okay, these form a group. And I can come up with some groups and categories to put them in. And then if I have to, if I don't have enough characters in that category, I can then fill them in and say, okay, what are some other people that would fit in that category or other characters that would fit in that category? Or you might just have them all and then put them in groups and then say, okay, well, here's a group I made over here. I've got, you know, five things in that category. What am I going to call that? Uh, and again, these might be modified slightly along the way where you realize, um, you know, one group doesn't quite work. So maybe you change the group or you come up with a new group and new characters to go in there. And there's lots of, um, lots of, you know, trial and error a little bit in this. Um, it's, it's going to be very rare that you come up with a fully formed idea in your head and you go from, you know, start to finish without having to make any changes, just not the nature of the beast. Okay, so we get all the characters, we start putting them in groups, and then now I've got 25 things. I've created the categories. They're color-coded here just to kind of make them easy to see. And so I'm going to name them all. All right, so here we go. I've got Jedi, Smugglers, Imperials, Droids, and Clones, and I've got five things in each. Great. Um, you know, and again, I may have I may have to go through this. Maybe I didn't have a droid category to begin with, and I had something else that didn't work. Um, and so I, I had to throw that one out and add a new one, and I came up with droids. Or, you know, maybe I couldn't figure out where to put, you know, Han Solo. So I came up with a group called Smugglers and then added in the rest of those characters and so on. 
Um, because some of these things are going to be hard to define and you just have to kind of work through it and figure out how to make it happen. So once you've got your elements into groups, these last couple of steps are really important to get it right. And there's, you know, um, these you kind of do have to do a certain way. The first few steps in getting to this point can take a lot of different paths, but from here on out, it's pretty straight line. So the next thing you got to do is figure out how are you going to rank them? And you might have already come up with that at this point, but you need to come up with some sort of measurement to rank them. I'm going to choose uh, how often they appear in the story. So that could be books or TV shows or movies in my case, because um, some of these characters only appear in books and some of them appear on TV series and some appear in movies and some appear across all of them. Um, yours might not be that complicated. Yours might be movies and how much they made at the box office. And you can look that up and put them in, in order and you're done. Um, or uh, I was talking to somebody earlier about sports teams. Okay, if you pick teams, you have to be careful about how you're going to rank them. Because if you just put teams and their their record, like wins and losses, you might end up with multiple teams that have the same ranking in terms of wins and losses at this point or at this point of the season. So you might have to, you don't have to necessarily throw out that idea, but come up with a different way to measure them. Maybe you come up with um, what we were talking about is what the team is worth, the net worth of the team. You can look that up online. There, there are, I'm sure, many websites where you can look up rankings of teams by how much they're worth in different sports. Then you can rank them that way, and, and it's very unlikely that there'll be two teams with the exact same net worth. Okay, um, And then how you group them from there is, is up to you. But um, that's just, again, a key thing to keep in mind. You can't have two of the same element, and you shouldn't have two elements with the same measurement because it, it just kind of goes against the idea. So I'm going to pick um, sort of frequency or, or screen time, for lack of a better word, even though some of them might be in books. How often do these characters appear in the Star Wars stories? So then I start to rank, you know, some of their, the order, and, and you know, you could debate about maybe where some of these belong in the order. Um, but we do stuff something like this, and then I go through, okay? And I get them all ranked, and I end up with something like this. Okay, so what I've done at this point is I've got them in groups. Each group has been ranked from the smallest to the biggest, from top to bottom. So all of the things at the top of their current groups are the smallest, or in this case, least often seen or least frequently seen characters in that category. At the bottom of each column, is the most frequently seen character in each category. So all the, all the first row is the smallest, all the bottom row is the biggest, and in between they're ranked you know, within their groups. The last step that you need to do, and this is, I think, the one that gets most people confused, is now I'm going to compare across the groups, one group to the next. And I'm going to rearrange the groups so that the, the smallest group overall is on the left and the biggest group overall is on the right, however you're measuring that. So since I'm looking at characters and how often they appear, you know, I would say that these, of all these groups, these characters appear the most. And then these characters probably appear the next. And then maybe some of these, and then these, and then these. Now, what I did is I looked overall at the, the appearance of the characters, and I might even, you know, rearrange this a little bit. Okay. So this group overall has the characters that appear the least often from top to bottom. Now, absolutely, this character down here might appear more than some of the other characters in that bottom row. But right now I'm looking at the groups compared to the groups, not individual. Uh, elements. So yes, this character might be might look slightly misplaced in that row, but when you look at the group, the group overall is the least frequently seen characters. And there might be other places in here where you might say, well, um, you know, this character actually appears more than this character. But again, looking at the groups as a whole, this is the order the groups go in from left to right. Um, now you could, 
uh, in theory, if you had a, a, a subject with a lot of like, I have a, there's a lot of characters in Star Wars. So I could theoretically, if this bugged me that these characters were out of order, I could maybe swap one of them out for a different character to make it fit better. I could. Now, if that happens a lot, right, where there's, and I'm not saying that these are all, any of these, if I find that there's a lot of characters that don't fit, yeah, I would want to go back and reevaluate the characters that I chose and maybe try to choose some different ones. But if it's, you know, one spot here and then one element here that doesn't quite line up, but everything else fits, that's okay. Yeah, it's very hard to get it perfect. Um, so you want it to be a general pattern so that if it works correctly, this character up here is the smallest, this character down here is the biggest overall, and in between, there's a general pattern that going to the right and down gets you bigger and bigger things, okay, whatever that measurement is. It's not going to be perfect. The periodic table isn't perfect. Um, there are a couple of places on the periodic table where there are elements that look like they're out of order based on how you look at them. Uh, but it's going to be the pattern, right? The first column has the most characters that appear the least often, even though the last one appears a lot. The next column has characters that appear a little bit more often on the whole, and maybe not every single one, but there you go, and so on and so forth. So that's the idea, okay? Get your elements, pick your categories, how are you going to measure them, then first rank them within their group from top to bottom, smallest to biggest. Do that for each group. Then compare the groups to one another and order them left to right by group. Okay, Even though you might have some characters that look like they don't fit when you do that, you want it to be the general trend. Okay, So I hope that helps. Um, certainly available to answer any other questions you might have about the project or your particular idea how you might measure them. You know, these are the things that, that we kind of work through uh, in the process so that at the end of it, you have the best possible project. Okay, there you go.